respected. And I've worked in like the quote business world in uh, in Germany with Germans. Um, and I've also enjoyed in my previous life some of their fantastic automobile engineering in various guises. Um, but also, I have noted that, um, you know, on your website, you can get like a map with little flags in where people come from, uh, that there's a distinct absence in certain parts of the world. And one of those uh, is Germany. And I don't think it's a language thing. I think it's cultural. And so a lot of people uh, often say to me, why, why do you think that people interested in consciousness and, and spirituality and metaphysics, why are they mainly British and American people? And I think that's a very interesting question. And of course, language does play into that because if, if you're Russian, you might be supremely interested in all these things. But if you haven't learned English, um, you're going to be on the back foot a little bit unless you know you've got all your Google translation technology and, and whatnot. Um, but I do think that um, there's definitely countries in Europe um, where in Scandinavian countries as well, having discussed this briefly with Henrik Palmgren, who I think you probably both know who he is, um, he is very much like laughing when I say that about his you know homeland of Sweden. And it's the same really um, in a lot of places that the left brain is given prominence. And I, I think it's okay that, but like you say, it can lead to um, really an overcompensation in the other direction. So I think uh, like the New Age movement is an overcompensation really for the sort of drabness of scientific imperialism really. And a lot of New Ages are just as bad in a way. And having been round sort of Glastonbury in England, which is a lovely, lovely little town, but you know, there's a lot of people dancing about and really disowning their own life and their own responsibilities and not really focusing on growth and on uh, integrity and authenticity and empowerment. They're really creating a world to escape into where everything's kind of like you know, safe and bouncy and lovely and supportive, which is, you know, obviously that's very attractive to people who are having a challenging time, but it's an escape. They're creating a virtual world to run off into. Um, so I think it's interesting when you see a very uh, logical place like Germany, um, whenever somebody, there was, in fact, having said all that, I was giving this workshop in October and one of the guys there was, was, um, was from Germany and he was the most mystical kind of uh, character I've met for a long time actually but that kind of proves the point that I'm making which is if it swings too far to one polarity the temptation is that there'll be like a catapult from there to the other polarity and of course as, as Thomas pointed out the sweet spot really the point of it is to not consider them as opposites necessarily but to consider them as um, parts of one whole so for me, I have ceased really to think of it as like, well, that's logical and that's illogical or that's creative and that's non-creative. They're just really different configurations of energy. They're just different ways of putting information together and proposing that as a thing, an idea or a tree or a ball or a glass of water or whatever. They're just different ways of proposing things. And of course we do have aptitudes um, and natural skills in certain areas. Um, some people are good with one set of configurations, some people are good with another. But I do think that um, there is, at some point, a realization that you have to become proficient in all those areas. And a lot of people who have listened to my stuff have kind of come up to me afterwards and said, you know what I like is that you you kind of very rational and reasonable and logical about what you do, which is funny because I don't think I am at all really. And they say, you know, in the new age movement, we need that. We need a bit of discipline and we need a bit of reason and a bit of philosophical penetration. And again, I'm kind of I'm I'm not saying, oh well, thank you, you know, that's great. But I'm I'm thinking, well, that isn't my conception of this at all. But you're talking to someone who's found themselves polarized in the other world. So to some extent, um, I, I uh, feel some sort of kinship with Thomas in that you do 
uh, realize that you have to sometimes uh, take it upon yourself to create this little bridge and say, well, I'm nothing special, but I can operate in both realms. I can be uh, scientific and I can be mystical. I can be philosophical. I can talk about emotions and sexuality. And I can also talk about uh, ultra terrestrials and paranormal. I, I, I realize that there's a totality here and approaching those subjects, really, you're talking about one thing. You're talking about, once more, one truth. And I'm comfortable in walking multiple terrains to get to that uh, space, if you like. And I think that is what um, perhaps connects us to Oliver. And maybe that's, I don't know what your view is, because obviously you thought, well, here's person A and here's person B. It might be interesting to get them together. Um, I think that is interesting. And I think it is important. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize that in their own life. You can't escape into the the new age realm and you can't um, satisfy yourself in your kind of scientific tower and just look down upon everything and think, haha, yes, I've got it all mapped out and measured and quantified and everything's cool. I think both of those people, again, hand on heart in the electric chair of truth, realize that they have they've gone too far one way and i think it, it is beholden to us personally in our own way and again i like how tom puts it in that it's i don't know about anyone else but personally for me i know that um it would be easy for me to just uh escape in my little study with books on the shelf and you know wear my old tweed jacket and smoke a pipe and just read all these fantastic 19th century books and just think this is great you know I'm just living an intellectual landscape that would be easy for me and I'd enjoy that quite frankly <laughs> but it wouldn't be authentic and it wouldn't really be fulfilling it would be an escape and I think that everybody sort of knows that so um, spirituality does uh, compel you to find your equilibrium and your integration point and when you stand there the ceases to be polarization because when you stand at the center that whole thing collapses so the whole point of negativity and positivity of construction and destruction is to lead you to the center point to lead you to the center of your own being and from there then you start to engage with you know what we might call your ascendance or um, you know, being able to positively deconstruct the reality around you to get to ultimate reality to see what that is. You can only really do that from the center point. So um, that's that's my view on this. Okay. Um, so when I look at the clock, we are almost at the two hour mark. So I would suggest that I will take my list of questions and maybe keep it for part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. why not because I, I really enjoyed it and uh, there's I think there's still some interesting topics that we could discuss but um, I think we should keep it under two hours because if anybody starts listening in and sees this is longer than two hours then probably a lot of people would just skip it and say I don't even have the time for that so yeah. we should stick to the limit and um, so coming to the end, I would suggest that both of you should uh, just briefly give your contact information, your websites, so that anybody who listened in knows where to look to find out more about you. Maybe, Tom, you can start. Okay. Um, the um, books that I have written are a trilogy of books called My Big Toe. Uh, you can find them for free on Google Books. You can find them in Amazon, you can find them in Barnes & Noble, at your bookstore, or at the website www.mybigtoe.com. And uh, if you are uh, interested in watching rather than reading, I suggest you go to YouTube. And if you Google uh, Thomas Campbell, uh, you'll get the YouTube site. If you uh, go to the YouTube site and search on TWCJR44, you will um, get to that website. And there are, I don't know how many, but, you know, lots and lots of videos there. Some of them only 10 and 15 minutes long. Some of them uh, are an hour and a half long. Some of them are series that go like 14 hours if you have that sort of stamina. 
But uh, I would suggest that people, uh, if they really are interested and want to know uh, more about the theory, the science, and the metaphysics, and how it all works together, go to YouTube would be a good introduction and listen to the Calgary Workshop. It's a series of lectures. They were given on a Friday, a Saturday, and a Sunday. And it would be good if you uh, listen to them in that order. Um, I suspect just take it in small bites, you know, 20 minutes at a time or half hour at a time is plenty. It'd be too much to swallow all at, all at once. But uh, those would be the places to go. Also, uh, on that uh, website, www.mybigtoe.com, there's a forum. And on that forum, there are lots of people who uh, are very uh, uh, grown up and, and understand these things. They're, they're good people to talk with. I'm on there uh, every once in a while and, and uh, answer questions. Um, there's also a Facebook site that uh, is active that you can reach uh, by putting my name in. So those are the ways to access more information. And um, if you're interested in uh, talks or where I'm going to be giving uh, workshops or that sort of thing, then go to uh, uh, www.mbtevents.com. And there's some people that run that site that basically do my organization and, and kind of keep track of where I'm supposed to be, when, and make sure I get there on time and and uh, am prepared. So that's about it as far as uh, more information, where to go and where to look. Okay, Neil, go ahead. Uh, yeah, if you go to www.neilkramer.com, um, that's my main website and most things uh, are available from there. There's a store with DVDs and uh, audio books and whatnot, um, events schedule on there, um, also details of my uh, teaching stroke consultation work is on there, and I have um, a book coming out in May called The Unfoldment, uh, so details of that will appear there. It's already on pre-order actually at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and what have you. Um, but yeah, neilkramer.com, all the main information is there. Okay, so Neil, Tom, thanks a lot for uh, the time you invested today. I, I enjoyed it greatly. Um, there were a lot of deep thoughts and a lot to listen to again to really absorb everything because uh, when I did the latest interview with Tom, it was only when I listened to it the second time that I really grasped everything that was said. So I think there's, again, a lot to grasp from listening to it the second time. So thanks again. You're quite welcome. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, be here with uh, with Neil and yourself, Oliver. It's always always fun. Yeah, similarly, thanks very much. It's great to talk to you guys, Thomas and Oliver. And thanks, Oliver, for taking the time and putting this together. And uh, hopefully we've created some compelling listening for uh, for the guys and girls out there. I hope they enjoy it. Yeah, I hope so too.